the vector function that, oh, star. Yeah, sorry, I, I didn't, I wasn't mindful of that. No yeah. problem. Yeah, thank you, Ahmad. Uh, that's uh, uh, about functions, a uh, really inter interesting chapter. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's go on. And the learning objectives, uh, uh, we are gonna learn uh, about uh, three useful types of functions. The vector function takes one or more vectors uh, and input uh, uh, and return uh, as inputs and returns uh, a vector output. But, but I think in the chapter, he just looks at uh, 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 a case of one vector or like maximum of a two vector, but we could uh, use as many vectors as we want as inputs. Uh, we'll also take a data frame as uh, input and return a data frame as output or plot functions which uh, will take a data frame as input, a data frame or even a vector as input, and then returns uh, a plot as a as output. Yeah, so these are some of the packages we'll need to load uh, to, to get this, uh, uh, our codes running. Now, introduction functions uh, are handy because they automate uh, repetitive tags, which is uh, uh, what, uh, uh, so our competition helps us to do so sort of, to be more efficient. Uh, have a name that makes the purpose very clear, like the the naming of the functions. Later we'll see the name in the argument and and also the body. Uh, you only need to update the code in one place as things change. So uh, as opposed to if you have the the code, the chunk of code wherein you have to change the name everywhere that it occurs. With a function, you just have to change the the the, the name and or the argument, and it uh, it it uh, that's enough. It's safer than uh, copy and paste uh, because with copy and paste you might uh, replicate some errors, or you have to do some adjustments, as we will see uh, in the first example. It gives so the the common theme uh, for functions is to be uh, consistent in um, like in your naming and also in the the arguments and and things like that. When and how to write a function. Um, so he gives the main reason, or one of the main reasons, you have copy and paste code chunk uh, more, than, more than twice, consider writing a function. The, the key steps to create uh, a function, like pick a name uh, that makes it clear what the function does. So the name should, uh, should, should, should be intu intuitive enough that you know, just looking at the name, you'll have an idea that, uh, you know, th th let's say if it's a function, that uh, calculates the mean, the name should uh, sort of reflect uh, something like that. And the, 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 the argument or inputs uh, go inside the function and uh, something like this, like the function and then the argument goes inside uh, um, here. And the code, uh, the code goes inside the, 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 the curly braces, which is the body of the, of the function, which uh, in a sense, uh, is what what is going to capture the repetitive uh, thing that we are doing in in a sense the body is what captures that uh, check your function with a few inputs to make sure it's working like once you're done uh, writing your function you could uh, uh, check it with a few inputs and see that it's doing what you want it to do uh, uh, functions are for computers and, and and for humans to be consistent in your naming and coding of functions if you are if you are, you're consistent, functions should should be like verbs, uh, um, like uh, action, state, or occurrence. Uh, arguments should be nouns, so the the, the arguments would be the, the the places, the or people, or or things, and and also be consistent with uh, the naming. Like we had the the snake case and the camel case. You know, each of those we 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 have to be consistent with uh, those type of namings. Uh, for sets of functions, use a, a common prefix. Uh, don't override existing functions. So, yeah, in a sense, uh, um, is you could you could use uh, existing functions to build your own function, but you, you don't you don't attempt to override them. Sort of. I use comments to explain the why of the code. This is very useful, especially if someone is reading through your code, uh, uh, even without uh, you explaining with the comments. It it makes it very clear, and someone could just look through the code and know what the function has to do and the person could just uh, use it uh, freely without any complications. Use lines of uh, like the, 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 
the dash or equal to to break up codes into like intersections. Just th that will also help with the readability. Yeah, so we'll start with the, the, the first function. Um, so this is a, a, the vector function. Um, this is a data frame. We sort of created a table and uh, we uh, use the mutate function. Uh, basically, we want to rescale this uh, table that we have created. But uh, we could see that a lot of repetition uh, in this uh, uh, inside the mutate uh, function, a lot of repetition. We are repeating the max mean, max mean, max mean. So uh, if we uh, want to replicate this somewhere, I will have to copy and paste. And in that, we could make some error. Uh, so it is saying, can we spot the error here? So the error here is with the, the, the when we are creating the, the, the B, the rescaling for the B, we copied the A, we didn't adjust it here. So these are some of the reasons that should motivate us to consider using uh, a function. So we'll try to create a function for for this uh, uh, this uh, this tax. Yeah. So uh, in creating the function, we look at the, the uh, to make uh, this a bit clearer. We can replace the bits that varies, like the things that change. We we realize here, see, here we see the. The random, random numbers we have uh, generated, they are the ones that uh, change sort of the A, B, and C. These are the random numbers we have generated using the, the R norm. So these are the things that we just have to replace with an argument. Um, so we could give the function a, a very good name based on what it does. So since it does rescaling, so we could give the name a name. Here I will uh, use uh, a rescale zero one because the, uh, this function rescales a vector uh, to lie between zero and one. And the argument, the, the argument are uh, things that uh, vary across calls. And our analysis above tells us that uh, we have just one. Uh, we'll call uh, it, uh, uh, it X because it's the conventional name for numeric. So this argument is uh, numeric here, even though it varies uh, across the call, but it's numeric. But we could uh, also have other arguments that are not numeric, so that are string and, and all that. And the body of the code is the, the body of the function is where the repetitive act, actions that we are doing will, will get into. And this is the body. So this is the naming. So the typical function will look like this. We have the rescale, then the function, and then the argument, which is x, and the body of the function, which are, uh, in a sense, does the repetitive act that we, we want to automate. So here we just uh, sort of uh, try to see whether this function works well with some uh, input, and we see uh, it works well. It rescales and it rescales this uh, input from uh, zero to one. We could try another uh, example, and uh, sort of the function does what what we want it to do. So we could uh, risk rescale uh, using the mutate uh, function inside, like we. Did in the in the in the, in the, in the, in the example it gives, we could use the rescale instead of writing all those uh, um, calls. We could just use the rescale function, and it uh, gives us the same results. Uh, he is also explaining that we could uh, we may want to uh, strip percentage signs, commas, and uh, dollar signs from uh, a string uh, before converting it uh, into a number. So we could also write a function to to do that for us. But I think the the, the only thing that uh, is a bit uh, uh, in the in the functions he's given, he's not uh, sort of he's not writing any comments. Um, any thoughts on that? I, I I think it would have been much more helpful if uh, they had given us comments, but uh, they are not given comments. Um, what do you mean comment inside the function? Yeah, yeah, like inside the function, or that's not the convention? Because I was thinking that would. Yeah, be yeah. So if you scroll down, for example. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So this one. So so what is the convention normally as you also read it? Um immediately after the open bracket where you have function x open bracket, immediately before any text, you have like comments what that explain what the function does. But I see here they are not just giving it, but in Python, I think that's um it's called what is it called that thing? The doc string. Doc string. Doc string. Yes, yeah. doc string. Doc string, doc string. Yeah. So in fact, in VS Code, um, if I create a function in Python in VS Code. Um, you just it automatically inside doc string for you the format of doc string like the what are the input what would be expected output what the program return and you just fill it in 
but here I can see like they are not, um, and you all, you also read it like, yeah, you need to give those dogs to them, but they are not putting it here. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit of, I don't know why, but uh, in any case, uh, that would have made uh, life a bit much more like easier, so. Yeah, exactly. And I think because um, it's a kind of documentation for your code uh, for other people to, to read. So if you explaining what the input outputs and arguments that takes it, um, if you use it uh, in some some kind, I think I don't know if R Studio doing this. If you 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 will find that every uh, function there is an explanation or a documentation for it. I think yeah. it's, it's it's written written it that way by doing doc string, but uh, at the same time uh, inside the function itself. Uh, yeah. that's, that's what's appearing when we do help. I think. Uh, yeah, exactly. yeah 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 hey, like even inside the book it doesn't uh yeah but but i think um that one like um i don't know in r um but, but like those one that you see when you see help i think they were coded in the pike package right in the package for that contains some functions but user defined functions I'm not sure like how you see it, but I, in Python, I know you'll be able to see, you know, the, the argument and what's about, but I'm not sure in R how you do that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what I'm talking to about. I don't know if it's uh, it's the same thing or not, but, uh, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, thanks, thanks for those inputs. Yeah, so uh, he's still uh, showing us uh, some other functions that we could, uh, um we could uh, work with yeah so we test whether this uh function works well so we want to clear this uh um, number we want to remove the, the the dollar and the the comma it does the the, the, the clear function does that for us since we have uh, already um sort of defined the function here yeah so that is it all about for the uh the 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 vector functions and that I think that was a cool exercise in the book, but uh, maybe we could just move to the data frame functions. Yeah. So we, uh, when you notice yourself copying and pasting uh, multiple uh, verbs like many times, um, you think uh, about uh, writing um, uh, a data frame function. So the, the 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 verbs here are sort of the arguments or something like this. So data frame functions uh, uh, work uh, like deep layer verbs. They take a data frame as the the first argument, some extra arguments. Uh, let's see what to do uh, with it and uh, return the data frame or the vector. So first they take the data frame and then they will add other arguments. Um, or sort of variables that will tell us what the, the function is up to doing, something like this. So uh, first it starts with the problem of uh, indirection in a tidy evaluation. So uh, basically um, um, he's uh, explaining that when we uh, run this uh, data frame function, we have the data frame, we have the, 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 the group by argument and the mean argument. Um, so we, we have the data frame, we like five, we group by the group uh, bar and then summarize by the mean bar. So when we take the, the diamond uh, uh, data and group by mean, cut and carrot, we have uh, uh, this error message. Um, uh, error in group by, uh, most group by variable found in the, like the data, column group by is not fine. Is not found. So uh, basically, what the, this function is doing, um, the group by is doing, it's looking for a column with the name group by, which is not actually what we want. We want it to sort of we want it to look at inside this uh, variable, and and sort of group group it. So so basically, I think in the book it mentioned somewhere like looking inside it inside the tunnel, instead of looking at uh, the, the entire data and seeing where we have a variable that matches group by. So basically this is what the, the this error message is. Uh, uh, this is what this code does. That's why it could not find the, the um, it could not find the group, group by variable. 
so to make the uh, problem to make the problem a bit clearer, we can use a made up uh, data frame. So we have this data frame. We have the table. The mean is one. The group by by g and group is equals to one. Y and so we have the group by uh, grouped mean x uh, group and x. So we have the the group uh, the group var is like g and the mean mean group is one. So the group by group and uh, y it, it it gives us the group var and the group mean. So regardless of how we call a group mean, it always does the group by group by the variable. It looks for the column group by, and then summarize also it uh, looks for the mean of the, the variable. Instead of group by, instead of it looking inside this uh, variable and groups it, it, uh, it looks for a column that is named group var. Um, I think if I get it, this is how I uh, get this indirection problem. And then later it will explain how we'll use uh, embracing to, to solve this problem. Yeah, I, I'm not sure I'd explain this clearly. So if someone could give, give a better explanation, that might be so help. Um, okay, yeah. so I, when I'm thinking about it, I think of um, the, um, the piping. When, yeah. when you do piping, you are passing values to um to a tunnel like you said mm -hmm. so you're, yeah. you're just passing from a function to another function the output of a function passing it to another function and so on and so forth um but mainly I, I when i think about it i think of scoping so the scope of the function is is not recognized inside the tunnel or the piping um so it, to, 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 that's that's uh, that's what he tried to explain here. Um, he doesn't see the argument that pass it passed it by the function uh, when it, it's called. Um, so yeah, yeah that's uh, that's what I, how I understand it. Just not seeing the, the it's, it's different scope because we are uh, using pipes and pipes itself. Uh, it's just. Um, uh, function calling another function that calling another function that we talked about before that's chaining call like it's like a chains of functions calling each other uh, in sequence so that's the scopes is different than the function scope when we that that we query so yeah that's how i understand it i hope it's clear yeah Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that uh, explanation. So um, then it's like giving us a, a way to solve this problem. So uh, the, the, this is a problem of indirection and it arises because uh, Diplier uses tidy evaluation to allow you to refer to the names of variables inside your data frame without any special treatment. To overcome this problem, we are going to use the, the tidy uh, evaluation, which have a solution to this problem called embracing. Embracing uh, a variable means to wrap it uh, in uh, braces. Example, uh, this, like this var, putting it in these two braces, uh, we are sort of embracing it. Um, we, we have this uh, the same example. Now, instead of just uh, uh, calling the, the, instead of just calling the group by function and, and uh, assigning uh, the argument group var, we embrace this uh, uh, group uh, group var uh, argument, and also we embrace the uh, the the mean um, var argument. And when we run the code, it works. So what it does, it uh, sort of goes inside this group uh, var, look for a group, and just pulls in that group, and gives us the mean of that group. Yeah, instead of starting to instead of looking for uh, a column named group var. It uh, takes this as an argument inside the uh, as an argument of the function and um, in the inside the data frame as well, and goes inside this and look for group a group inside this and get the information of that group and also the mean of that uh, that group. Yeah, so I I think that is what it does. 
So um, what this means is that um, in a nutshell, yeah. for example, given in, now here we have a function, um, you know, group mean, and the input, whenever you have a data frame, yeah. at the argument, at the input, at the argument, and some column of that data frame, you cannot call those columns of that data frame unless you do something like this. Um, I think there are also different variant on how to do this study evaluation. I can't remember, but in uh, advanced R, they have that one. Uh, also, this one, um, they don't have this in previous version of, R, uh, of R4DS, I think. So this updated version included. Um, so um, this really, uh, I, I, I had some questions some time before that uh, given a data frame, as I cannot access the column. So it sticks to me this one, like, you know, you need to do this tidy evaluation to assess any column in the data frame. So, yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it's quite interesting because, you know, if if you have not come across this, you, you will see the error and then you'll be like, yeah, exactly. where is this error coming from, you know? Yeah. 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 So now it's uh, telling us when we have to, when we could use this uh, Embrace uh, solution to solve problems like this. Um, so the, the key challenge is uh, in writing data frame functions is figuring out which arguments need to be embraced. And uh, so it gives us example of uh, data uh, masking. So some of these functions like the arrange, the filter, summarize, uh, that compute uh, variables. So they, they do some kind of a data masking and a masking. And in, in, in that case, you will have to uh, embrace the argument inside them to, because if you don't do that, you will come across this uh, error we have seen previously. And also in the, Tidy selection, we functions like the select, relocate, and rename uh, that select variables. Uh, in, in this type of cases also, we might uh, come across problems like this and we need to embrace. And also it, it mentioned somewhere in the book that you could also use your own intuition uh, to, to guide you on whether you will need to embrace the arguments uh, inside a particular function or not. Yeah. So common use uh, cases. Yeah, so this is an example of uh, like uh, the data masking case uh, because the, the, the summarize function does that. And if we, we don't sort of uh, um, embrace the arguments in the mean, mean, median, and the max, it will, it will generate uh, that particular error we have seen previously. So this is an example of where we'll have to use this uh, uh, embrace uh, to solve such uh, problems. Yeah, so this, uh, I, I think in the book, it also gives some more examples, but the, the slides just limited to it, it. In the book, it gives a case where the, uh, if you use the embrace, it will not work and you'll have to use the, 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 the hand pick uh, option. It, it gives that uh, situation as well in the book. Yeah, plot uh, functions. So uh, uh, this is a case we are in, we have a data frame uh, and then uh, we generate a function that uh, sort of, uh, 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 outputs like takes uh, the data frame as a input and outputs uh, uh, a plot. Uh, so an example, it's a, a, a function like this. We have the uh, the, the 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 name uh, histogram, and then we have the 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 function, the data frame, the arguments, the the variable, the bar, uh, the bandwidth, the bin width. It's uh, set to null. And uh, we we use the uh, ggplot and the geom histogram inside the, the 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 function in the body. Yeah, and if we call the histogram from the the using the diamond data set, we we have something like this as the the output. So we could uh, also do some uh, adjustments to this the the labeling, the number of uh, uh, diamonds and the 
the size in in carats, we could uh, add all that to the this. So this is very handy, especially if you are working with uh, um, 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 you you have like you are generating a lot of plots. So functions like this could make life um, easier for for one. So uh, he's just saying that, yeah, we could add more variables to the, the, the plot function. Instead of just limiting to x, we could add, we could look at x and y. We could add, uh, it's straightforward to add more variables to the mix. For example, maybe you want uh, an easy way to eyeball whether or not a data set is linear or overlaying a smooth, uh, by overlaying a smooth line and a straight line. So a function like this, this will help us to see whether the the, the data is really linear or it's a um, it's nonlinear. Yeah, the plot. Yeah, it gives us an idea that this we could infer that this data is not linear. So we could always add more arguments to the the plot function, and it, it still works. Yeah. Uh, we could also um, um, combine the plot function. Uh, with, uh, we could add other other uh, other functions inside it. Like we could use the mutate, and yeah. So it ex explains this uh, sim this operator. So we use this operator here because uh, we are generating uh, the variable name based on um, user supplied uh, data variables. User user supplied data. Variables name go on the left uh, hand side of the equals to, but uh, R syntax does not allow anything to the left of the equals to except for a single literal uh, variable name. So it's like it's a it's a bit raining here, so it's a bit noisy. I don't know whether you you are hearing me. Hello? Yes. Yes. yes yeah. Yes, yeah. We can hear. Yeah. So uh, it's explaining this uh, this uh, particular symbol this particular symbol that uh, because uh, uh, like uh, we use this operator here because uh, we are generating uh, the variable name based on uh, user supplied data variable names go to the go on the left hand side of the equals to but our uh, syntax doesn't allow anything to the uh, left of the equals to, except for a single uh, uh, literal name so that's why we we use this uh, uh, this symbol here. Yeah, and we could see what it. Uh, so we could also use the filter uh, function inside the the plot function. So uh, basically, we could add more more other functions uh, to 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 this uh, function, and it will still work. It uh, basically depends on what we want to do. Yeah, I think that's the final part. It talks about labeling. Uh, we could uh, we could also use this r r lang function to uh, like uh, um, give a good label to our function using the, the 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 bracing we have seen previously and put the 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 argument inside the brace uh, with the the bean width in this case. And then like this, you know, we could have a very good uh, labeling. And this should work with uh, uh, all types of uh, uh, arguments that we are we are using. It, this this R lang function should should work. So it uh, automatically uh, use the, the 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 our argument of interest in the in the naming or the labeling of the the the, the plot we generate, which uh, sort of is a very good way to automate our 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 plots. Yeah, that's it. I think in the book it mentions about styling, but we have seen uh, styling in the previous chapters. Basically, it's uh, the same uh, styling rules we try to maintain, and it uh, emphasizes that we try to be consistent in the way we name our variables, especially, and try to make it informative, not too short, not too long, but let it be in informative enough to 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 tell us, uh, like what the function is up to doing. 
yeah and that's it that's it for this chapter in this chapter that's a, a, a in this chapter we learned how to write functions uh for three useful scenarios creating a vector creating a data frame uh or creating a plot uh so uh, to learn more about programming with uh tidy evaluations uh see useful recipes in uh programming with deep layer programming with tidy r learn more about the theory uh in what is data masking and why uh do i need it to learn more about uh, uh reducing duplications in your ggplot read uh, programming with uh, ggplot2 yeah so I, I think that's it the, the uh i i found i also found some of the exercises quite useful i was trying to do some of them and i found them quite useful all right thank yeah. you very much abdul yeah thanks uh, for I just want to, to just add uh, last thing is yeah. uh, always think of a function as a the, the basic unit of solving a specific problem. So don't think of like um, yeah. I just I find this very useful if you have programming uh, background. So instead of having a complex problem, just to try to uh, divide it into small problems and for every small problem try to uh, create it's, uh, uh, it's uh, an, a smaller function to handle the smaller problem and try to use the overall all, all the all the, fun the small function together to to handle this complex problem that uh, you want to solve this is how you do uh, big uh, big programs or big analysis using functions so uh that's uh that's what i i would add in last thing so oh yeah that's 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 profound you know in a sense uh, the, the main takeaway i was getting you know if you do a messy like analysis and then you from there you try to see how to uh, create a function but what you are saying it's even more interesting like you know say like seeing it as a way to solve more complex problem that's uh that's quite interesting thanks all right so the next chapter we have is called ice iteration and which i think is something related to this and i will be able to go uh, walk us through next week about iteration um yeah from iteration then we have um you know uh tidy bar i mean base r and quattro um yeah yes. so a field guide to base r we have still another chapter and then we have quattro and yeah Abdul register for 